My father was Arthur Keller, mother Catherine Keller, and I was their first child. I was such a beautiful child that whoever saw me would lose their heart to me. And so precocious that by the time I was one, I had already started babbling, howdy, tea, 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 and water. Beauty topped with brilliance. No wonder I was showered with love from all around. Time was speeding by and now I had become four to five years old. To my great joy, I had found the company of two playmates, my dog Belle and our cook's daughter, Martha. Now that I had company, I realized the need to communicate. Ingenious that I was, I soon came up with around 60 signs to converse with her. Then, if I wanted bread, I would pretend to cut a loaf and butter it. And if I wanted ice cream, I would enact a shiver. We went there. At that time, I was around seven years old. The director of the institute, Michael and Agnos, who recommended us to one of their young and promising teachers, Anne, who had herself suffered from blindness due to trachoma. After a battery of operations, she had regained her eyesight. Post recovery, from the age of 14, she had become an instructress for the blind at Perkins. In no time, things fell into place and a few days later, Anne came home. My first meeting with Anne was truly memorable. I stretched out her hand and she reached forward and hugged me. On one such bright and beautiful morning, Helen was happily playing with a hand stretched below a hand pump. Watching her joyously playing with water, Anne came running and she quickly grabbed one of her hands and wrote water on it several times. The cool water flowing on one hand and the persistently written word on the other suddenly filled Helen's dark world with glorious light. Helen finally succeeded in comprehending the connection that the cold thing falling on her hand was water. Certainly, this was the most wonderful moment of her life. Hence, at the age of 32, I became a member of the Permanent Blind War Relief Fund. As its member, I left no stone unturned to help the disabled. I started receiving invitations to express my point of views. I had already learned to express with my lips. Now grabbing this opportunity, I not only expressed the socialist viewpoint firmly in front of the world, but equally focused on disseminating the essence of socialism. But after all, Helen was Helen. She stoically bore the blows that life had dealt her. But she never let the feeling of working for the betterment of other people die within her. During these troubled days, the support of her sister Mildred and her brother Phillips helped her to sail through. But can the mere support of others change the very course of destiny? Recovering from one shock after another, Helen continued with her work. Around this time, Anne, the biggest support system of 56-year-old Helen, departed from this world, leaving her all alone. This was beyond doubt the most tragic event of her life. Time passed with Helen tirelessly working away. When she was 80 years old, Polly Thompson also passed away. Meanwhile, Helen had grown old as well, but to tire, give up, or admit defeat was not in her nature. Even at this last stage of her life, she used to be engrossed in books. Philosophy in particular interested her the most in those days. Finally, 
Helen breathed her last a few weeks before her 88th birthday.